Welcome back to Buffalo Times. I'm Nancy Shade, and I'm here with Rick Weatherell at the Kingdom Jiu-Jitsu. And he's going to explain to us what Jiu-Jitsu is and where, where it originated and what he's doing with it as a, you're a professional. Mm, well, I guess so now, Haven't technically. Haven't you won a bunch of awards? I have. I've definitely won some tournaments, yeah. And I guess technically... Uh, own, owning the gym here, that makes me a professional in, in some way, I guess, yeah. So you're a coach? Yeah, coach, yeah. And, he, and we're, we're also, he's from Hardwick as well, yeah. where he started out with the boxing group. Yeah, that, that was my Mr. start Jill martial arts. Had. Yeah. yeah. Well, tell us about it. Sure, yeah. So um, I, I'll start by explaining sort of a little bit about what jiu-jitsu is. Thank you. Yeah, they call it the gentle art. It's a grappling-based martial art uh, where you... The objective is to control your opponent, get them to the ground, and look for a submission, which is some sort of joint lock or choke. And the reason they call it the gentle art is because, as opposed to other martial arts where there's kicking and punching, there's no kicking or punching. It's all about controlling your opponent and doing the least damage possible to control the situation. And how is it different than wrestling? That's a good question. Uh, it's similar, but uh, wrestling, the objective is to get a pin, uh, whereas jiu-jitsu, the objective would be to get a submission. And I would say the other big difference is that wrestling is a sport and jiu-jitsu is a martial arts, so there's a lot more focus on self-defense in a real altercation, whereas wrestling, the focus is going to be uh, on sport and uh, scoring points and stuff like that. I see. Jiu-jitsu does have a sport aspect to it, but also a self-defense aspect to it. And that would be one of the main differences between wrestling and jiu-jitsu as well. Well, how do you know that somebody has submitted? They'll tap out. So when you apply a joint lock like an arm bar, you are hyperextending their arm slowly. And when they feel that they can't get out of the move anymore, they'll tap out. Well, how long does it go on? Uh, matches, typically, when we spar here, matches are five minutes. Um, there are competitions, and they can be anywhere between five and ten minute long matches. Um, it, yeah, so the, it just kind of depends on the, on the match. But we do train, you know, in a, in a self-defense altercation, there would be no time limit. So conserving energy and, and using as little energy as possible is definitely a large part of jiu-jitsu. So... How does it go from being a sport to being a lethal weapon? Yeah, that's a good question. There's two sides to jiu-jitsu. There's a sport aspect and a self-defense aspect. We do both here. The sport is very fun, and it's a great way to prepare yourself for a self-defense altercation. But the main difference would be when we're doing the sport, we're not punching or kicking each other at all, whereas in a self-defense application, you're not punching or kicking your opponent, but they potentially could be trying to do damage to you. So there's a large part of ma uh, managing the distance so that you can manage the damage done in a fight. You know, you either want to be too close to your opponent so their strikes are ineffective, or you're so far away that they can't hit you. So that's a really important aspect of jiu-jitsu as well. And what is your age group qualification? Right now, I'm just doing adult classes, that's all. Uh, hopefully, we'll have kids class here eventually. There is kids jiu-jitsu offered in Hardwick right now. Uh, my friend Adam Beckley is teaching kids jiu-jitsu. Uh, and it's at uh, the Grace Building, I think it's what it's called, uh, which is next to the co-op. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a big responsibility. And it's, it's not carrying a gun, which is good, right. really. Yeah. And, but it is carrying a lethal weapon. So yeah. um, it's the maturity that it, the discipline brings to mm. the individuals. Are they, can they be men, women, children? I mean, what is, what is how, how, who do you I teach? Think, I think jiu-jitsu is for everybody, for sure. Anybody can get something out of jiu-jitsu. Men and women, uh, adults. I, right now, the cutoff is 16. Um, if somebody were a little younger than that, they potentially could jump into adults class. That's sort of where the line between the kids classes and the adults classes is. Uh, right now, Adam is doing the kids class. I'm doing the adults class. Um, but men, women, children, anybody can get anything out of jiu-jitsu. How old were you when you started? I started my freshman year of high school. So I guess I was 14 when I started. 
How did it change your life? Oh, man. So I think being small, uh, that was uh, kind of giving me the confidence to defend myself was a big part of how it changed my life. But that's a big question because it changed my life in so many ways. Uh, definitely gave me confidence being a smaller person and just knowing that I could defend myself against a, a bigger, stronger opponent. But also, uh, I started out boxing and then transitioning into jujitsu and martial arts in general provided me with, uh, you know, friends and a community and discipline, uh, so many things. It's, uh, it changed my life in a lot of ways, for sure. And you have a lot of dignity. And I noticed that some people, um, some people don't have a lot of dignity. But yeah. when, you, when you travel in Europe, even the waiters and waitresses have dignity about their work. Yeah. And so I think that you carry yourself well, I noticed, oh, the way you, you walk and everything. Oh, thanks. And, and I just feel like um, to explore that a little bit more is really important because I don't think we all talk about dignity too much. Yeah. And um, it's, it's different than pride but you can have pride in, in, your, in what you do and who you are. But dignity carries through everything you do almost. I mean, everything from washing dishes. I, I remember sometime having to do that once, yeah. but I thought I, I'm gonna be the best Hobart user, mm. <laughs> dishwasher yeah. that this lodge ever had. Yeah. Because I had hurt my knee and I had to do it. So it's, it's um, and I learned that from watching people in Europe for some reason. Interesting. And how whatever they did, they did with pride yeah. and dignity more than that. Yeah, more that's than interesting. I, I, there's definitely something about martial arts that does bring that out in people. You know, you, you uh, ev treat everybody with respect and that's something that's really important when you're inside the gym. And uh, it's hard work too. And when you start, you're at the bottom of the totem pole, no matter how big you are. It doesn't matter. Somebody big and strong could come in, but if they don't know the technique and they haven't trained, they're going to be at the bottom of the totem pole. And so that's probably some of it too, is that it's like the military in that way. They break you down and then you build back up from there. And that's probably where a lot of that comes from, is that you know any, any success you have in jiu-jitsu or martial arts is earned and, and then it just instills that, that dignity and pride in you because you have to work hard. And where did it come from? What country started jiu-jitsu? So Japanese, uh, it has Japanese origins, but what we train is Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And the story is that uh, somebody from Japan named Maeda came to Brazil and was teaching jiu-jitsu to the Gracie family. And the Gracie oh. family were the pioneers of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. The story goes that um, Carlos Gracie was teaching jiu-jitsu and his brother, Elio Gracie, was very weak and frail. So he would just watch class. He wouldn't participate because he was too small and too weak to do that traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu that relied more on strength and brute force. And one day, Car Car Carlos Gracie uh, was late to class. And there was a stu I think it, maybe it was a private lesson. There was one student there. And so Elio Gracie just worked with him. He knew the techniques because he had been watching Carlos Gracie teach and so he taught this student and then Carlos showed up and he said oh I'm so sorry I'm late and the student was like no it was great I really enjoyed working with Elio he really knows the technique well and what Elio did is he had to modify certain techniques to work better because he was so weak and frail and that's what birthed Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is using leverage and uh, modifying the techniques so that they could be used uh, by somebody small and weak to defeat somebody bigger and stronger. So it's lever in leverage. Leverage is a huge part of it, yeah. Uh, that's one of the main principles in jiu-jitsu is using leverage to overcome uh, bigger and stronger opponents. I remember the first time I ever realized leverage. I mean, I knew what it was, but I never had to apply it. And I had this great big uh, uh, ice box in yeah. the, at the Fine Arts Co-op in Smuggler's Notch that I ran. We were selling beginnings, really, of Ben & Jerry's ice creams. And um, I, they brought the ice cream, and I had my freezer, but I had to plug it in. But they pushed it so against the wall 
that I couldn't plug it in mm. and my ice cream was yeah. going to melt. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so the clock is it, ticking. It really was like a light bulb went on in my... I, I had a, a wrench mm -hmm. and, and I had it... I noticed it, and I, or it was something, it, and I realized I can use that. Yeah. And I put it behind the freezer yeah. and leveraged it out. Yeah, it was that's as a simple example. as pie, and I plugged it in, and I saved the ice cream. That's 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 a great <laughs> example of leverage. And the longer the fulcrum, the more leverage you have. And yes, so, yes, the fulcrum is really important, isn't right. it? Right. So if you think about a move in jujitsu called the arm bar. Yeah. A lot of people would be familiar with that, especially if you've ever watched the Ultimate Fighting Championships or whatever. But it's, it's not like this. It's a move where you're attacking your opponent's arm basically with your entire body. You're holding, you're controlling their wrist all the way out on the end of the fulcrum, and you're using your hips and your legs and everything to control your opponent. So you're basically attacking your opponent's arm with your entire body. And I, that's, that kind of illustrates what jujitsu is about. So it makes the arm useless. Yeah, and well, and you're hyperextending their elbow uh, slowly and waiting for them to tap out and controlling the position. If it's a real fight, you could be negotiating with them. You could just be keeping them pinned down until police arrive. Um, or in the sport, you're uh, applying the arm bar slowly until they tap out. Yeah. And when they tap out, do they literally tap on the ground? Yeah, well, you want to tap on your opponent, yeah. If you tap the ground, they might not hear it. So generally, I oh. say to always tap your opponent so that they can feel it. Or oh. say, you could say tap. Okay, because yeah. otherwise they could end up with a broken elbow. Yeah, but we always apply the submission slowly. Uh, because the thing is, when you're in a submission, even without applying the breaking mechanics, without breaking the person's arm, the position in and of itself is incredibly controlling. So they're not going to be able to get out. So there's no rush to break anybody's elbow. You could just control the position, slowly bring your hips into their arm. I'm controlling their arm. I'm lifting my hips up. And they'll have plenty of time to tap out. Wow. Yeah. Yep. You can control them in the, in the position as long as you need to. Oh. That's the beauty of jiu-jitsu, really. So yeah. if somebody would feel pretty secure knowing that, and do they train military people in jiu-jitsu? Yeah, uh, Gracie Combatives, the, the jiu-jitsu combatives program is what they use uh, in the military. to te uh, And I think a lot of the police, uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I know the military uses Gracie Combatives in their training, But but the use which is jiu-jitsu. Wasn't there a policeman that you, you took a class with that influenced it's you? It's true, yeah. Can Before you tell us about that? I was telling you. So, uh, it's funny, I'm looking out the window in the gym and I can see the, uh, what do they call the flood zone? It was called the flood zone bar. Oh yeah, the flood zone. And that's where the Hardwick Boxing Club was when I started at 14. Uh, that's what got me interested in, in martial arts. My friends had to practically drag me to the boxing club. I didn't want to go because I was scared, small, and, and, uh, and just thinking that it was, I was going to get hurt. And I fell in love with boxing. and. A police officer, Mike Giro, I don't know, he doesn't, he's not a police officer in Hardwick anymore, but he was when I was 14, and he would come into the boxing club pretty rarely, but occasionally to punch the bag, work out, whatever, show us kids a few moves, and one day he came in and uh, was showing us some jiu-jitsu techniques. He showed us, I still remember, I was 14, I'm 29 now, and I can still remember he showed me how to do a rear naked choke and an arm bar, and I, those were my first two jiu-jitsu techniques that I learned, and I was just... Mm. Oh, what's the word? I was like mesmerized, uh, fascinated by these techniques. Uh, they felt like secret ninja moves or something <laughs> that I could use. That to, you could do. Yeah, and you know, I had no idea how on earth I would be applying the techniques because you know he showed me the submissions, but that's just part of it. You still have to get to the point where you can, you know, if you want to do a rear naked choke to somebody, you have to be behind your opponent. See, there's a lot of steps involved in getting there, but. But just learning those techniques and, and knowing, um, you know, I could use that leverage to, to, if I could get there, if I could find myself in that position, it wouldn't matter how big the person was. I would be able to, to, uh, to control the situation. And I just started, it all started with YouTube. I'd be uh, on YouTube just looking up all the, all the videos I could find. Uh, eventually I got my license and I started driving all the way to Burlington to train because I was the closest gym. From opportunity Jiu Jitsu, and I started with Julio Fernandez out there. Very uh, good. And that's where I got my blue belt. That was he was Brazilian? Belt. Yeah, he's from Brazil, moved here. I'm not exactly sure, uh, maybe 20, 30 years ago. Ooh. Started teaching Jiu Jitsu, I think, out of his garage initially. Wow. And uh, built up from there.
Yeah. And you stuck with it. I did, yeah. Eventually, one of his students, Chris Padula, opened a school in Morrisville, so I didn't have to drive so far anymore, which was nice. Excellent. Yep. Trained in Morrisville for a long time, and now here I am in hard work in my own school. And how many people can you take at a time? Right now, the gym is small. You know, I feel like Julio starting in his garage, right? <laughs> It's really uh, it's, it's big small to gym. me. Well, I appreciate you saying that, but it gets tight fast. Oh, so, oh. so um, we already are thinking about like what you know, what other spot in Hardwick could we get that's bigger? But we, I love this spot. It just gets a little tight right now. Um, probably twenty people is is pushing it, uh, and uh, and on Mondays, Mondays tends to be a big class, so it's already getting a little bit tight, uh, which is a great problem to have. So, do you uh, start out with a demonstration or? Yeah, every class starts out with a warm-up, and then I show uh, technique, and then uh, we do some sparring, and that's kind of the general flow of class. So if you have 20 people, there would be 10 people sparring. Yeah, and, and that's, I mean, ten, that's when it ten, gets tight. Yeah, yeah, ten yeah. Spars, that's when it can get a little bit groups. tight. Yeah, 10 groups. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're still growing. So right now, it's only been a problem on Mondays. Those have, that's been the biggest day. Eh, it's not even really a problem yet. It's just I'm sort of just anticipating it being a problem, you know. So are they all ages at the same time or how do you do Just that? Just adults right now and uh, it's an all levels class so it's it's beginners and up all in the same class. And do women come? Yep, yep. We have um, I think five women signed up right now, maybe six. I'd have to like think about it for a second but yeah we have some women. Yeah, it's good to know how to protect yourself isn't it? Yeah and I, I think Jiu Jitsu is particularly probably important for women. Or I shouldn't even say probably, it's particularly important for women to learn, yeah. Hmm. What else would you like to tell us about what you're doing? Yeah, um, uh, well, I told you about the origin of jiu-jitsu. I told you about how I got interested in jiu-jitsu. Um, what else should we talk about? Well, um, where would you go with it personally to continue to grow? That's a good question. That's a good question. I'm going to have to think about that one for a second. Like where, like what's my five-year plan? Yeah, my, and do, would you go into competitions? Yeah, I do, I do compete. I'm competing this Saturday uh, in Syracuse, New York. So I do still compete. Uh, there's a few students who are getting excited for a tournament in Barry, uh, right here in Barry, Vermont. Oh, great. Uh, Where? June 10th at the auditorium, the Barry Auditorium. Oh. There's a few students getting really excited June for that. June 10th, so. what time? Uh, it'll be all day. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu tournaments take a long time. It'll do be people all come day. and watch? Uh, yeah, there definitely will be some people watching, yeah. Yep, it's because it's, it's like a wrestling meet. It's just sort of all day. So, you know, if if uh, if I compete, I'll have a few matches, maybe maybe maximum of five or six matches, a few minutes a piece. You know, potentially up to six or seven minutes a piece. But you, you're there all day, even though you only compete for a short time, because there's so many people that it takes a while to get through all of the matches. Do you think any of your do you call them students? Yeah. Or? Do you think any of your students will come and watch? Yeah, well, like I said, some of them are going to participate. And oh, some are participating already. Yeah, 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 I didn't yeah, catch absolutely. that. Yeah, well, that's but, what I was saying. Is some wow. of them are getting excited to compete for oh. their first time. So how long have you been doing this here? Well, we've been here for a month, uh, but, uh, but we were in Morrisville before that, training at a CrossFit gym uh, using their space to train. So there, I have some students that have been training with me now for uh, quite a while. How many moves are there? Uh, too many to count. Really? Yeah, too many to count. I would say, uh, wow. you know, for, for a beginner, I would say there's somewhere around 30 moves that, like, you really need to know. Uh, but jiu-jitsu is ever-evolving, and people think of new ways to apply the, the different techniques, and wow. so it's always growing. Very creative. It is, yeah. There's a huge aspect of creativity to That's it. That's amazing. Yep. I would say jiu-jitsu is not a set of techniques. It's more a set of principles. And, uh, and so you can create jiu-jitsu as long as you're using those principles. Like, is it energy efficient? Does it use natural body movements? Uh, you know, like, it, it, there's a certain set of criteria of principles that is jiu-jitsu, uh, you know, using leverage. And uh, so people come up with new jiu-jitsu moves all the time. It's the new green sport. The I new mean, green sport? Green, like everybody wants, you know, to save the world. The country, oh, I see. The nature. Yeah. You know, nature is in trouble right now. Right. But it sounds like it is, would be the sport of the people. All, all of us want to save nature, really. Right. 
but so it sounds like it's the leading um, principle yeah. of our time. Yeah. So yeah. I would imagine, do they teach it in high schools? Uh, they don't. I think they should. I think they should. Kids would get a lot out of it. The thing is, oftentimes you see kids bullying each other in high school, and you may think like, oh, if we teach them martial arts, if we teach them jiu-jitsu, it's just going to arm them with techniques that they could use to hurt each other. But what you find, and what I've seen in the gym dozens of times, is that somebody comes in that maybe is uh, an aggressive person, uh, maybe bullies people, but once they start to learn jiu-jitsu, you come in, you, you, you get, I don't want to say beat up, but you're at the bottom of the totem pole, uh, and you build yourself up, and it gives you that self-confidence and that ability to know that you can control yourself. So the boxing club at the flood zone, mm -hmm. was that where it started well, with Mr. Gillineau? That's where it was when I started at 14. I'm 29 now, so uh, 14 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, that's where I started. I'm not sure where the boxing club was before that, though. Um, and then we moved to the Hardwick Inn when Larry Hamill bought that space. And we were in the top floor of the Hardwick Inn for a while because there was no shops in there yet. We had that whole top floor of the Hardwick Inn. <laughs> and then once they started renovating it and putting those shops in, we, we went to the basement. Oh, but yeah. That was great, yeah. It was good. That's, yeah. I remember It was really there. important for me to have the Hardwick Boxing Club as a kid because it kept me out of trouble, taught me discipline, and gave me that self-confidence, and, and got me interested in jiu-jitsu, which ended up being one of the biggest passions in my life, so. It's an art. Yeah, definitely, yep. And are there drawings of it? Are there, can people see pictures mm. where they know what the moves are, or do they just watch mm. you and then do as you do? Yeah, so I remember, I like, in the past, before the internet had boomed, there were, there's like a lot of books about jiu-jitsu where you'll see the techniques in images and then you kind of have to like visualize what they look like but and now that's, you did that on your own right yeah but now with youtube you could just go online and look up the okay. moves and see people teach that's them. So we that's kind of changed yes yeah. i get that's that that's all kind of changed now but yeah there are jiu-jitsu books where there'll be drawings or pictures of people doing the techniques and that's how people would learn a lot like if you weren't going to the gym you you might or if you know it's a day off from the gym you might read a jiu-jitsu book and visualize the techniques and read about them but yeah now the internet, you can learn any jiu-jitsu technique you want yeah, on but YouTube. Yeah, it's, but it's hard to g take it from a page or from somebody doing it and yeah. actually do it yourself. Yeah, for sure. It the videos allow you... It would be good if you a brother you... or sister that you could practice with. Yeah, yeah, and then you still need a coach to help correct <laughs> yes, your mistakes. Yes, so absolutely. What the, the videos are nice to watch, like supplemental. It's like doing homework, but then you still got to come into the gym and drill those Did techniques. Did you hear and... that? You really do need a coach. <laughs> yeah. So it would be fun to come in and try this out. How do they get the opportunity to come in? I mean, do you do you sign a paper? Or? Yep, you'd have to sign the waiver, uh, the liability waiver. Uh, sometimes people will message me before they come in, and uh, and that's totally fine. Send the gym page a message. Send me a message. What on, is the gym page? It's Kingdom Jiu Jitsu on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, say it again. Kingdom Jiu Jitsu. Facebook and Instagram, so. And the spelling is on the wall. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you know, people sometimes will ask me questions about like, what should I bring or whatever, but you really, you, if you want to just stop in, you can just stop in. Um, but How, if you do, if anybody has any questions, you can message me. So the, what are your hours? So we do class uh, every evening at 5.30. Tuesday's a little different. It's at 6 p.m. on Tuesdays, just to confuse people. Uh, <laughs> And then on Saturdays, we have an open mat at 10 a.m. Yoga, I'm sorry, yoga at 10 a.m. Oh. 10 to 10.40, we, we do yoga. And do then you after do the that, yoga it's an or open does somebody mat. Else? No, I, there's an there's a instructor that comes and does the yoga. And then after that, at 10.40 and on, it's just open mat, which means the gym is just open and people can, can just come in and train. That would be a good time to practice techniques that maybe you saw in a video or whatever and want feedback on. And you're here. I'm here, yeah. So open mat after yoga on uh, Saturdays, and then Sunday, same thing, 10 a.m. No yoga, though. It's just 10 a.m. open mat, and then there's a class Sunday at 5 p.m., and that's what the schedule is right now. So if Definitely you stay up to date with the Facebook page and the Instagram page just in case anything changes, but that's the schedule right now. So Sunday, 10 a.m.? And then again, 5 p.m. So if you have 8 o'clock church or, or right. synagogue, you right. can still come yeah, exactly. to your jujitsu. Yep, exactly. I mean, 
it says, uh, uh, what is it that's saying, carry a big stick? Yeah, uh, carry a big stick, but mm, talk softly, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Speak softly, Speak but carry, softly a big carry a big stick. stick. Something like that. Winston Churchill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said that. Exactly. He was a cool guy. Yeah. But he was a soldier, too, for a while. Mm. But if anybody's planning to be a soldier, I mean, it's a good idea to try this. Definitely. Like yeah. I said, uh, Gracie Combatives Jiu Jitsu is taught in the military. And so it's definitely good to get a head start on that if anybody wants to join the Army, for sure. There, we've had multiple students come in because they want to, you know, young, younger people that want to join the Army. And, Excellent. And, yeah. You heard it here, Buffalo Times, Hardwick, Vermont, HCTV. Keep posted. Thank you.